Okay, Ajaga, congratulations. So, first, Xuanhe didn't realize I was also his student. He didn't put me on there. Ah, <laughs> uh, where is it? Yeah, here I put it myself on. <laughs> I was his student. Although he was young, four years younger, but he was just like my little brother, four years younger. I learned about fraction mechanics because you guys had that webinar. I went to yours, I went to Constino's. And that's how it gets started. Exactly three years ago, Zhigang also started to tell me, hey, thanks to pandemic, I'm uh, Zoom meeting my uh, fraction mechanics course. So I jumped in, right? Become your student at 61 years old. <laughs> Like a new 40, uh -huh. <laughs> or a new 20. <laughs> so here's the whole take home message. In other science, what can I make out of the, being a student and learning the, on the subject? To me, it seems to be this topic of figuring out whether my strength is high enough uh, compared to what you observe my, my so-called uh, uh, inherent strengths. In other words, uh, you better know what is your inherent strengths when you want to study fracture. So here's the point. If your inherent strength is much greater than your nominal strength, go to do fracture mechanics. Okay, go to do fracture mechanics. Conversely, if you're, uh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> Don't worry, you go, oh. In any case, so, Computer problem, not mine. Uh, so otherwise, if your nominal strength is comparable to your inherent strength, you can forget about fraction mechanics, right? Go back to material <coughs> physics. The second condition is exactly the condition when your flow size is much larger than Zhigang's favorite. He popularized this concept of fractal, uh, uh, fractal cohesive lens. And that's also the limit when your material becomes flaw insensitive. So it seems to me the whole thing about fracture mechanics is to figure out whether your, ha, ah, I don't know, I don't think it will continue, but whether it's to figure out whether this inherent strength, how do we estimate that? Is it large? And that's the problem of polymer physics if you are doing polymers, where I have specialized in it. And I, I'm okay, yeah, so uh, I, I'm gonna just struggle with it. And, um, <laughs> Uh, 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 and uh, it's crucial to realize that, that this is the key. And with that, I bring a different perspective. Well, Wu Dang. I'm, Zhigang is very famous. I'm only known to be infamous. So today I'm going to borrow his fame to become famous in one minute. In the following sense, now you know who I am. I'm very new to you with maybe a couple of exceptions. So although I have been in the field for 40 years, 35 years, uh, this is the different field I work in. And uh, there are books written on it. Uh, they are all very large subjects. And I happen to be working on the first subject very, uh, for a very long time. And uh, uh, I have written a book. And for three years, I become Zhigang's student and learning the last subject of fractional mechanics. And it seems like there is a different way to think about it, at least. And therefore, I have decided I have to write a second book. And this will give me all the fame, matching Zhigang. Zhigang is masterful with Twitter. This is from his tweet. Let's exactly just focus on, on this problem. He teaches us, he teaches me that the load, the G, the load, reaching GC is just like you're doing a measurement of temperature of your material and watch when your material undergo phase transition, melting. Powerful, I think Zhigang will be most famous for this analogy. So the question is, still do this. The question is, uh, I want to know what does TM mean? 
I want to know what determines this here. Okay. So it translating to our fractal mechanics, I want to know why GC is a constant. I want to know what determines magnitude. So here starts, get started. I, I just go, I'm going back to my polymer physics. I told you I need to figure out what is the strength. And here's the strength you find. Idealize, if you idealize it, you find the strength. Indeed, it's much bigger than the norm, uh, nominal strength. Same with rubber. You don't, you don't have any uh, uh, so-called strength hardening, yet it, it fractures. So uh, bingo, that seems like it's fracture mechanics. Uh, everything is uh, flaw intolerant. But is that so? So I'm asking that question again. Is nominal strength much bigger than intr intrinsic strength? I'm asking that again. But being Zhigang's student at 60, I, I, I cannot nag with him, right? I cannot say, Zhigang, tell me why the toughness is constant and what determines magnitude. Uh, 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 and there are books who says, uh, who says everything is about flow. And I'm just trying to... Uh, there's tons of literature telling you that it's flawed. And if it's flawed, then you can prescribe the strength of your material by making a cut and get the measurement of toughness, and you somehow prescribe a, a flaw size, and you go explaining what. What I was frustrated sitting in Zhigang's uh, courses is he eventually told me that GC is much greater than the surface energy. This frustrates me like no tomorrow. I lose sleep. I honestly lost sleep. <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> I said, this is not right. Because when this is true, I cannot justify why GC is constant. I'm just a simple-minded person. And furthermore, uh, you go to KC. Well, you know the whole thing. The KC is here. And then KC also does the same. It has a, what I complain bitterly, openly or, or privately to Zhigang is, this is just operational definition, definitions. It gives me no insight about what GC is and KC is. It tells me nothing about what case, why KC is constant. It tells me further nothing about what magnitude. Well, it turns out, to answer that question, it goes back to my question I raised. What is your inherent strength? OK, so sorry, this last minute. Is it true? Wow, we have bounds. <laughs> is it true that the inherent strength is much greater than? Then let's estimate it. I had some. I have a feeling through my thirty years of, that, that 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 I have a theoretical way of saying, hey, maybe they are not much greater. But if we don't trust the theory, do the experiment. <coughs> Figure out at the tip whether whether that's whether that. Uh, 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 Let's determine the stress at the tip. So, so I, I'm, I'm just going to show you that indeed people find GC to much greater than gamma, and it frustrates me like no tomorrow. I tell you. So let me ask that question again: Is it bigger, much bigger? Well, you can do your polymer physics and try to see what is the theoretical stress. I have significant experience on that, and teaches me they are not necessarily bigger. Experimentally, experimentally, watch that. You just watch if you can determine what is the stress at the tip, at fracture. Then I have had access to what is the inherent stress, and then I can get started. The rest is history. So we turns out we can just use birefringence, right? So you can just uh, uh, yeah use uh, either white light or, or monochromatic light. Uh, I use the correlate birefringence with strand, and strand goes to stress. So you do that for an uncut sample, and then you can do that. Then you can map that information to a sample that has a cut, as that movie shows. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to show you the, the, the monochromatic light case. So let's jump on. Let's first jump on to the, the, uh, the plastic case. Uh, I'm only going to talk briefly about the brittle case, which is really in the linear elastic limit. So everything is clean. And I'm mostly talking about viscous uh, linear elastic. So you watch that tip, and you find the color change as, as the, the strength increases, builds. And you can determine all of that as a function of how much load you have. Lo and behold, you find that, that the tip, that the stress field at the lower load <coughs> builds toward tip. It's because it's minus one half of R. But then it saturates, surprisingly. So you load a little more, it goes higher, but then it saturates again. However, 
this is 100 microns, so I can resolve it. I can prove that there is a plateau, so therefore I can claim that at the tip I do have uh, access to the stress at that point. And it, this stress turns out flows linearly with the load. Oh my goodness. So that linearity turns out reveals a characteristic length scale, which is Zhigang's fractal cohesive lens. Turns out. So in any case, you watch this powerful relationship between the tip stress as a function of load all the way to the point of fracture. And you find that's just a constant, right? It's slow. And it has the scale of, of what I call P. You carry that extract and relationship all the way to the point of fracture. I frustrated three years ago like mad. You can't go to KC. What was KC is operational. I have no clue what that means. But now you can look what it means. You carry through until K become KC. What happened to the left? The strength. The strength. And now suddenly I prescribe a materialistic expression for KC. And I can convince myself why it's constant. It's the material stress that should be constant. And this magic length scale apparently is material specific. The cohesive, you know, the fractal cohesive length is material specific. And so therefore, I have an expression for what I now know why KC is constant, and what's the magnitude. And and on the left side, of course, I know the operational one. So here comes my concluding slide. Almost. You have the operational definition of KC and GC. And then you have materialistic KC and GC. When you introduce a crack or you have, to have a flaw, you not only introduce one length scale, you introduce two. The size and the sharpness. The sharpness provides a second form. And here comes Zhigang's favorite fractal cohesive lens. I tell you, this framework even works for glasses. So my last minute, I'll just speak uh, only a word about uh, elastomer. So, uh, well, I'm only restricting myself to brittle case. So uh, brittle glass, polymer glasses, or elastomer happen to be brittle. I know it's a little more stretchable, but nevertheless, it's all the framework of linear fracture mechanics almost applies, almost. Uh, I know uh, uh, you, you, you may not uh, uh, be entirely happy with that. In any case, this is the literature. Uh, if you go back to the famous, I just learned from Zhigang, right? Revelance, 70 years ago paper, he explicitly complained that little tip is too small. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to see what happens. And so he falls back to Griffith and the Jacket. But it turns out you can't, you can't. Also, uh, there's a large problem of rate dependence and temperature dependence, which I talked about yesterday. And I hope uh, my uh, Castino, this, did I surprise you? So my next, the next talk will hopefully will follow up on, uh, a little bit on this uh, 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 elastomer case. So in any case, uh, there are giants working on this field. Uh, these are the people who have photos. I should add these photos here, and, and Lon is here, uh, uh, Constantino is here, so is here. Uh, and I'm just, I just came too late to the party. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is what kind of uh, uh, inspired me. Uh, uh, I, I bitterly complained, at least to myself, so Zhigang, three years ago, man, this thing diverges, so we have to introduce a way to, to truncate it. And I have struggled, gee, why, why doesn't it fracture just with blue at the lower load? And why not even at green? Why has to go to that magic red, meaning loaded more when fracture occurs? It just drives me mad. I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I, I cannot comprehend. And then of course, if you, but the, hear me right, you do manage to get a, 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 a toughness right in terms of the measurement. But what we found really surprising is, is, is the stress only gently builds up at the crack. All right? And don't be confused. This flat region 
has nothing to do with this flat region. I keep emphasizing it with with uh, with the reviewers. But you know why? Why is uh, why? Yeah, reviewer. Why, why I have the paper? So here's the story. The punchline. See, I I'm just so happy to be working on polymers. The 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 scale where this plateau is 100 micron, 50 micron, I can resolve it. If I cannot look at the red line, I won't be able to resolve the difference between the two. But didn't I have a slide on glasses? Once you have this framework, this insight, the whole thing actually applied to glasses, window glasses. Except if you ask me to do window glasses, I won't be able to resolve. So that's it. So with that, I, I want to uh, uh, stress again that that there is this uh, uh, way of thinking about materials, physics speaking, what the fracture mechanic is about. And it's all about having to, if you want greater toughness, having greater strength and having a bigger tip blunting, which we know toughens the material when it's blunt, when the P is bigger. And I want to end, so therefore, you want to increase strength and cohesive length. I want to end up with Zhigang's magic work, in my opinion. Where, in my language, Zhigang, you are increasing the strength. Thank you. Great questions. Now, uh, I'll give you this one. So, uh, what is this uh, sigma alpha? Uh, do we have a value? Do we really reach that ideal strength? Uh, hold on. So, so if this thing cannot be resolved, that in other words, it keeps increasing, that I, I would have no way of claiming to know what is the tip stress. But it plateaus. So I claim that is the tip stress, no matter how close you are at the tip. experiments, what's that level? That, oh! That level turns out to be the same as an uncut reaching the breaking point. The norm, sorry, the home, the nominal strength, strength which you do with the uncut turned out to be comparable to the inherent strength. That's the whole. Thank you, thank you for that. That's the whole point. Very good. And I have a question. Uh, 